Hi! Ooh. 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 Hi! I can just drink from my... Oh, fuck. Go drink from my official Pleasant Kenobi mug. Oh, it feels good. It feels so good. Welcome back to another, what I call, a decadent uh, box opening video. Essentially, I have these boxes here. Three boxes of mystery boosters. Now, I'm not gonna open all three today. I wasn't even gonna open one. I was considering just keeping all three of these boxes for drafting on the channel, or just generally, because this set is gas. It is so good, it's so fun. And I'm not just saying that because this is a sponsored video, because it fucking isn't. Fun fact, I bought these boxes myself, because Wizards wouldn't send me one. If you want to send me one, Wizards, by all means, so you, you know you know where I am. So originally I was going to hold on to them and draft them, because I drafted this like seven or eight times at conventions thus far, at Reno and at... What was the other Magic Fest? Bologna, that was the one. And barring only... Win I couldn't win more than one game per draft, because I'm fucking terrible and the format's also crazy. Um, but I still had fun. It was some of the most fun drafts I've done in ages. It feels somewhere between Chaos Draft and Q, but I'll go into more of that in a moment when we're opening and we'll talk through how the set feels. So, I'm gonna hold on to these two for when this viral pandemic is over in like six months time, and hopefully draft those later on the line, and I'm gonna open up this box today. There are 24 packs in here. Uh, originally, the community believed this was repacks. The community lost its fucking mind. Literally every like small wannabe magic YouTuber was just making like clickbait virally trying to be viral videos of anger being like, Oh my god, they're repacking cards! Turned out that was complete bullshit. This actually ended up being a pack, a set full of value. The EV on these boxes and on these boosters is really high right now. For those of you who don't know, this is a reprint only set. It's mystery booster because Essentially, where a normal set is somewhere between 200 and at most like 380 cards, something like that. This has over almost 1800 cards in it, I believe. Again, I will talk more about the formatting of how they got to that and the ins and outs of it as we open the booster. The Convention Center ones had their 15 card packs, and one of the 15 cards was what's called a, um, a test card, as, as it were. They are like uh, thematically meant to be the kind of cards that RD have created to test magic back at R&D. There's some mixture between Uncards and Future Sight. Um, some of them will be on screen now as I'm saying this. They're really, really fun to play with. However, that was unique to the convention version of this that was going to be available at Magic Fest's ongoing. Obviously, the future of Magic Fest's... Well, we know Magic Fest's are coming back, but during the coronavirus outbreak, if you don't know, the majority of Magic Fest at the moment have been just cancelled, essentially. I was planned to be at Copenhagen in April, but that is cancelled. All the ones through March and April are cancelled. And hopefully they'll be back on before the end of the year. But God only fucking knows. God, that's, that's so fucking negative, isn't it? I don't, this video's not meant to be negative, by the way. This is meant to be a hype piece because I think this set is fucking awesome. So the convention set version had those test cards. This version has a special slot for foils, which you'll see in a moment. Every pack has a foil. And some of those foils are exciting. Some of them are a bit shit. I will talk about that in a moment as well. Some of them are exciting. But all that out of the way. Let's get hyped, let's talk about how great this set is, how I think this is probably the best product Wizards have put out in like the last two years. I mean, it's better than Modern Horizons because it didn't fuck every format immensely. <coughs> oh, let's finish my coffee. Now, I got these boxes for 90 English pounds. There is a, a lot of misinformation going around and anecdotal discussions of exactly how many of these boxes are going to be available. Now, bearing in mind, it's not a limited print one. The idea is that they will print more. Um, however, in typical Wizards fashion, I struggled to find them being all that transparent about it or putting any of the rumours to bed. So, the initial uh, supposed distribution of this is kind of done and the stores are now waiting to get more. I bought this for 90 English pounds from Chaos Cards, who now have 120. So it looks like they're aware there's a scarcity. If you are in a rush to get one of these, by all means buy them at the uptick premium price. But just bear in mind that they aren't a limited print run product, so there will be more boxes coming. There will be at least a second wave, for example, which will give us boxes at a lower price again. And don't forget, ultimately, if it wasn't for my YouTube channel, I probably wouldn't be cracking this. It's much better to draft. Uh, so perhaps we'll pick up one now or in the next wave and wait to draft it once the whole like coronavirus is out of the way and you have to self-isolate. Okay, so let's crack it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through probably like every card in each pack uh, because the packs are so weird and varied. I'm going to spotlight the first pack or two though to discuss how these packs 
are laid out so you can understand how they're draft. The booster boxes are very slick. I kind of like this slick, thinner box style because it goes with the whole mystery X-Files-esque minimal uh, marketing and packaging. So, mystery booster one. Let's give it a shot. So we've got Acrobatic Maneuvers, a flicker spell that draws a card and flickers a creature, and Fellow Our Guardian. Straight away, we've had two flicker spells in the same pack. That's pretty sick. I'll probably be on some sort of flicker plan at this point. We'll do a pack one, pick one for this as well. Go Mag Drowner. That's the exploit card that when it gets exploited, you can look at the top four cards of your library, put the rest to your graveyard, put one into your hand. Claustrophobia, the double blue aura that uh, paralyzes a creature, essentially, stops it from tapping or untapping. Reckless Spite, destroy two non-black creatures and you lose five life for three black mana instant speed from one of the Iron Cap blocks. Pretty good removal spell. Oborg's Uprising, return up to two target creature cards from a graveyard to your hand, draw a card. Vandalize, so it's basically destroy target land or, or artifact, right? Shock, pretty premium removal spell, some really strong cards in here so far. Elvish Fury, which is target creature, it's plus two plus two until end of turn. It has buyback for four. We have a Fog. We have an armament core, which when it comes to the battlefield, you get to, to uh, put two plus one plus one counters among two target creatures you control. It's pretty strong. And we've got Temple of the False Gods, which is, uh, as Toma and I agree with Toma on this, a trap in Commander. Then we've got this. What the hell is this? Crenellated Wall. Target creature gets plus zero plus four until end of turn, and it's a wall. It's a zero four. And then we've opened our first Mythic. We've opened Doretti. Uh, so as you can see, even the commander cards made it into here. And we've got a foil blasting station, which is sick because I need one of those if I want to build Teshar and with isolation kit anyway. So that is sick. So that's the first pack. Now let's talk about how this pack works and how the allocations work. The reason it's 1800 cards as it were, is that instead of having a normal set where you have all the cards on a sheet, you have a common, uncommon, a rare sheet, they get cut up, and then a certain number of the commons get shuffled about and put in a booster, a certain number of uncommons, and a certain number of rares. That's how a normal set is created, along with Mythic slot, and obviously the double-sided sheet if there's a double-sided slot in the, in the set as well. In this particular one, they did not do that. Instead, as you can see, there's two white, two blue, two black, two red, two green, then two multicolored or land, one rare, one foil slot and one old slot. So to explain what they did for each slot in the pack, there is a sheet or two. I think it's just a sheet actually. Uh, I don't know how many cards are on a sheet off the top of my head. It's a number. You times that number by the 15 cards, you get that magical 1670 or whatever it is, then plus this sheet. So essentially this slot here can have any one of the cards on that sheet then this slot can have any one of the cards on that sheet. And for that reason, there isn't a set number of commons and uncommons. You have common, 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 and that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six uncommons and a mythic. So we have a, two white slots with two white sheets, two blue slots with two blue sheets. Black and red and green. Then we have the uh, multicolored and the land sheets. Again, each one of these has their own sheet that the cards are selected from. I'll probably flash up a picture of a sheet on screen as I'm talking about this. Then we have the rare sheet uh, or, or mythic sheet. And then we have, I actually don't know if the rare or mythic is a separate sheet. I'd have to double check that. Then we have the old sheet, which is anything pre border change. Now, for those of you who don't know, the borders when they brought in the holograms happened in testing my knowledge. I can cut this bit out. I'll probably leave that in. I googled it. It's M15. They had a border change. We've got this thicker black bar at the bottom, the addition of the hologram to help avoid counterfeiting. So this slot is a load of cards from those sets prior to that border change. So there's lotus petals and all sorts of stuff in here. Then we have the test cards, as I said at the beginning, are now replaced with this foil sheet. Now all the cards on the foil sheet are cards that were available in foil previously in their original frames. We get old frames, new frames, modern frames, so on. So this is actually the old frame. However, all of them are added. Every card in the set has this Planeswalker symbol added to the corner to let you know it's from the Mythic Booster. Apart from that, everything else on it is exactly the same, including the copyright and everything else. Watermarks, like here we've got an Abzan watermark and all sort of stuff. It's a very cool set. That's why there's such variety, because of all the different sheets for all different cards. So we've got a Mythic and a cool foil blasting station. Now the interesting thing to note from a lot of these foils is that they were astronomically expensive previously. So the, the Dark Steel Foil Blasting Station was like 20 bucks. This, according to Goldfish, is currently set at four. 
much more reasonable. It's going to bring the price of some of these fours down for people's commander's decks and such. This is a playable card in certain combo decks in commander, and obviously you can see some fringe play in other formats, but not so much. So I'm pretty happy to open this guy. I actually try and play it in Teshar. If I was looking to draft this pack, oh god, what would I take? Probably Dometi. It's got the most amount of like uh, Leo, like back and forth on what it can do. Obviously, it cares majority about artifacts. And, I, mean, I can take artifacts all day long. Other than that, I'm thinking probably one of the flicker effects and take decent ETBs. But bearing in mind, I am shit at this draft format. I tried to draft actual synergy and got fucking dunked on quite a bit. What are we doing moving forward? For you that to, to, to understand the homes, I'm going to put uh, like desirables, undesirables, and like the money. Money will be mainly the rare. So these are all undesirables in the sense that I'm not looking to keep any of these available. Maybe Fellar Guardian comes into the semi-desirable. When I say desirable, I don't mean costing money. I mean people will be looking through your folder, they'll see it and they'll be like, you know what? I would like to trade for that. So we're gonna put Armament Corpse and all that crap there. Fellar Guardian and Temple of the Force Gods. It's a crap, there's a lot of good cards. As you saw, premium removal spells for limited. The format is a lot more powerful than your standard chaos drafts. And then I'm gonna put the money over here. Cards I don't care about, cards that are desirable. Right, each pack now will be going a bit quicker than that. I just want to explain how this stuff works. So, we've got uh, a Bulwark Giant, a Loyal Sentry. Oh god, this this was a rare at one point. It was downshifted to common in M25, which is pretty funny. This card was great during our Drowsy Winter because you could flicker it with the trigger on the stack. Uh, Jeering Homunculus, uh, Fathom Seer, Farborg Revenant, Blessing of Belzenok, Brute Strength, uh, Death by Dragons, Jungle Delver, Gnarled Pack, River Hooper, Blossoming Sands, Trigger Gain Life. Then we've got the rare being um, Juicy Apprentice, which flips to Tomorrow Reveler. So Juicy Apprentice says, three mana tap, draw a card. If you have nine or more cards in your hand, flip it. And when you flip it, it says target player draws X cards where X is the number of cards in your hand. Cool card, not very excited by it. Oh, there you go. So the old frame slot, pre-M14, can also be rares. So here we've had two rares. So we not only have this Juicy Apprentice thing, we also have Runescott Demon, which I think is by far 100% the pick from this pack. Like, you just pick big bombs and ramp into them or fix into them, right? And then we've got a Foil Changeling Hero. So, okay, double rares. This is the pick. It's a big demon that shoots something. Um, it's pretty strong, pretty good commander card. Don't know where its price is at at the moment. Uh, this thing is a foil changeling hero. The changeling mechanic being a thing where they it, it, it champions any creature that's in play, and this is a life linking four four. <laughs> this is a card that's not desirable for anyone, honestly. Like I'm gonna put it over here in the foils, but like what? Why? Why was that included? I, I get some of the cards on this sheet are memes. Stormcrow, for example, is on that sheet, but look, why? Why? Why this? Like it's funny art, uh, I guess. It's a waste of a card though. It's a waste of a slot. The only criticism I have for this is the wasted slots. Now, as you saw in that last pack, again, I said the power level of the cards in here is higher than you're getting Chaos Draft. Chaos Draft is a clusterfuck because no one knows what they're doing and the cards are too weak. In this set, uh, a lot of the cards are uh, generally good, so you can get away with playing like powerful cards, um, like, for example, Rune's God Demon or, or even the Armament Core. Uh, some not very exciting stuff. Impulse is pretty cool. I'd put that in my part of things people look for. It's a legacy playable card. Very dark printing of this Dead Eye Tormento here. Evan Card Justice, Pauper Staple, a Valakit Invoker, Rolling Thunder. That's a Pauper Staple too, right? Rose Thorn Halberd, Acidic Slime, sweet. Always want a couple of those knocking about. Battle of Null, what does that do? When it has a battlefield, it two dark creature cards from your grave to your hand. That's not a bad six drop creature to be fair. I'll play that in a budget commander deck. Not Reliquary Tower, yeah buddy. Tower of Aeons, it's a rare, it's eight mana, it's tap it, it's gain eight life. Now, yeah, it's not the most exciting of rares. That's a whiff, that's a whiff. It's a four mana artifact, it's not very exciting. I'm gonna put that in our rare pile. And we've got Odric, so that was in our old slot, right? And then in our new slot, the, the, the rare slot, we've got Odric, and then we've got a foil codex shredder, okay. This, is cooler than this because this is a playable modern card because it's been played in things like well I guess lightning control probably doesn't exist as much anymore because mox opal's gone but like it's still been in decks like codex shred is still a cool card so yeah okay that that had some pretty good pauper staples in it as you've seen we've hardly seen any duplicates yet and duplicates yet oh next mystery booster we got Abzan Room Mark. 
infantry, call to heal, coal trickster, water plank, queen's agent, what is this? Oh, it's exploring a lifelinker from Ixalon. It's funny when I see cards I just, just avoided when I drafted and then don't know what they do. Ancient stirrings, cool. Soul ring in your uncommon slot. That's right, you can open soul ring in your draft deck. Yep. <laughs> Chromatic lantern, sweet. And a <laughs> cool mystic study. Here it is. The foil one with nothing. Now, now this meme, this... Like, running joke within the community that this card will one day be broken, all that is tech for owling mine. And there's a video by Sam, uh, the magic man Sam, Ristic Study. So this card being in the foil slot, I can completely get behind, okay? This is not... This is probably a joke with someone in R&D or something. Like, it's not really all that... Like, it doesn't fit with a wider community. It's sort of an inside joke where this... I get it. I'm not excited to open it, but I get it. This is a Flying Vigilance 5-5 five, five for 7. That's not terrible, I guess. Um, but yeah, we've got Soul Ring, Ancient Stirrings, and a Foil one with a thing, and a Chromatic Lantern. Um, Chromatic Lantern's obviously worth a few bob before the recent reprint. This is the reprint in the new fray, a new set symbol, sorry. It's with the Guilds of Ravnica or whatever it was. It's Defiant Strikes and Feather Tech there. Lunok Mantle, Messenger Jays, Stitch Drake, Grave Purge. Innocent Blood, Legacy Playable. Gavanic Blast, Modern Playable. Crash Through, I guess Modern Playable now with, with Prowess. Greater Basilisk, um, Earthen Arms. I don't even know what that does. A Bear's Companion, I'm a bear. Loxodon Warhammer, once upon a time this was a solid card. Now in our old slot, and this is still a solid uh, commander card, honestly. Was this rare at one point? I feel like this was rare. I'm gonna put it here. People might wanna get that out of my, my, my trade box. We have Hakon Strong, what was it called? Stronghold Scourge. He's the one that allows you to play Knights from the Bin, right? Yeah, as long as he's in play, you can play Knights from the Graveyard. He's a really cool, interesting ca uh, character. I like I like this card a lot. We've got Revel and Riches in our new uh, rare slot. Then we've got a Foil Soul Attendant. Okay, it's a card that seems playing like Soul Sisters in, in, in modern, um, so I can, I can understand it. Uh, again, I get this. I still don't get this. This is the one that's bugged me the most so far. These packs are great because you just get to see so much weird old stuff and cards you haven't played with in a while or if I got even existed. Some sort of hawk, some sort of caratouche, a gush, a propaganda, a vampire and nighthawk. Is that really a desirable card anymore? No one needs or wants those, right? It's a cube card, but. Ah, uh, but that. Volcanic Rush, Goblin Balloon Brigade. Seek the Horizon, Ivy Lane Denizen, a crow in hotlight, Tormod's Crypt, oh, Weathered Wayfarer, oh, Expropriate, oh, Foil Hornet Sting. <laughs> Again, this makes sense in that slot because although I'm not excited to get this as my foil, our foils haven't been very valuable thus far. Like, Hornet Sting is a card that Rosewater claims is a big color pie break. And beyond the Rosewater Watsy joke, let's, let's talk about something more important here. I like decks with bees in them. Beads! I've made many bee decks before, so this card being in the Falls lot is sick. Weathered Wayfarer, super interesting piece of tech that I've played in DNT before, and I definitely have played in Commander. It just lets you go show, show some lands. Yeah, if your opponents are ahead of you, you just get to your final land. It's sick. Absolutely sick. And then we've got Expropriate. One of the best blue cards in Commander, right? This is like Blue's Crater of Behemoth. This is Cyclonic Rift. Absolute huge staple, probably shouldn't exist. The originals of this are currently at $40. This version's currently at $30. So that is an absolute fucking hit. That is a win, as they would say. I'm, I'm happy about opening that. Would I play in Commander? I, I don't think I've ever cast it. Like, I'm aware of it. I'm aware of how frustrating it is, but I've never cast it. Maybe I should... Try to play alongside Thousand Year Storm to piss off my local store. Uh, Aerosaur, Nyx Fleece Ram. I played this card quite a bit in Standard. Caller of Gales, Snap. Does that see any play in Pauper? Who knows? Marsh Honk, Night's Whisper is a playable card. We'll keep over here. Some sort of Berserker, some sort of Elemental, some sort of Indric, some sort of Combat Attack. Esper Charm, lovely some Esper Charm. Wildwood Lodge, not that exciting, but pretty good in Elf Deck. What the hell is this? Ulst isn't Hypnotist. Yep, sack a creature and make your opponent discard two cards. It's uh, pretty strong. Sorcery speed only, but it's pretty cool. Sewer Nemesis, sweet. It's like a Trina Nemesis, but like fair. 
Oh, look, it's huge because it's apparent office equal to number of cards and something in target player's life. Oh, hoo -hoo! okay. Now, this would have been like some proper money at some point. Now, we just have the secret lair version of this, so I assume the foiling price on this is down, but I'll take a foil Reaper King. That's a sick open. Do I want a commander deck around that? Fuck. Imagine opening this box and building a commander deck around that Reaper King from just the stuff in this box. How gas would that be? So, interestingly, the original foil Reaper Kings, where it's like $70, this is but at three, according to Goldfish. Um, that's too much of a discrepancy. It must, like, you know, even out somewhere between that. This is going to be worth more than $3 in time, without a doubt. But I am pretty happy to open both that and Sewer Nemesis. Both sick cards that I did not own, and I'm now happy that I do own. Another thing to bear in mind as well, as I crack this next pack without clearing up my mess, is that... Look at the amount of rares that we've opened. And like cards that are playable in constructive formats. But look at the amount of rares and fours we've opened compared to other boxes. Like we're not even like a third of the way through. Uh, Artisan, Cast Out, Banisher, Looter, Annihilate. Cast Out's a playable card, I'll put it over here. Wake the Vultures, Blood Ogre, Dragon, Gale Watcher, Basilisk, Tithe Drinker, Copper Carapace, Sakashima the Imposter, Supreme Verdict, and a Foil Witchbane Orb. It's, <laughs> it's not every day, my friends, that you open a booster pack of magic cards, one singular booster, and you open yourself a, I mean, you've got a playable uncommon here, that I've played it in Abzan in modern, right? But also a Sakashi with the Imposter, a Supreme Bullet, and a Foil Witchbane Orb. That's fucking ludicrous. This set is so good, just for cracking all players. Currently got 11, 9, and like 1 and a bit. I mean, again, I guess... <sighs> This isn't super desirable to anyone, barring like when people play it in World or Lenting Control and stuff, but this, this Pioneer Modern Staple and seems playing Legacy and is a huge commander card. And I fucking love me some clones, especially this set just makes me happy. Super fucking happy. Next pack. This booster box is nowhere near over. Look at all the cool shit we've opened. It's fucking, I, I'm not, I, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit here. Maybe I'm not. You tell me, I think this set is fucking gas. Ah, uh, something crappy, something crappy. A sick card limited. Fairy Invaders, Reaper of the Night, Spreading Well, Ingot Chewer, playable card, Fury Charm, Rampant Grove, Cosmex Predator, Grim Contest, Butt Fight, Fairy Conclave, playable, Crystal Shard, playable, Tireless Tracker, woof! <laughs> and a Foil White Knight. Okay, this is, okay, this is close to being as bad as this, but it is an iconic magic card, a super iconic magic card, so I'm, um, I'm gonna put it in the hit misses, but I still think it's cool. But it's not as cool as like Hornet Sting or One With Nothing. But we've got a Tireless Tracker, so I'm happy with that pack. Tireless Tracker being one of the greatest green creatures ever printed. Not even remotely fucking close, my friends at home. Ugh. Right. Got a foil in here, I just saw it. Caravan Escort. Cathar's Companion. Deep Freeze. Mana Leak. Touch of Moon Glove. Animate Dead. Ill Tempered Cyclops. Vent Sentinel. Year is Force Mage, Beast Within, Draconic Disciple, Mishra's Factory, a Mythic Broodmate, Dragon Broodmate, a Mimic Vat, and a Foil Zer's Weirding. Holy shit, I did not know that was in this set. And it's in this like cool, it's a bit dark, but it's an 8th edition foil. For those who don't know, 8th edition was white bordered, but all fours were black bordered. It says, players play with their hands revealed. If a player would draw a card, he or she reveals it instead that any other player may pay to life. If a player does that, put that card into his owner's graveyard, otherwise that player draws. Yep, pretty weird. And we've got another really sweet couple of uh, commander cards here in the Mimic Vat, which is often cut from my command, Dragon Broodmother. So normally like the last cut. But still, oh god, play, imagine playing Box Seal Commander with this set. It'd be so good. So good. Okay, Healing Hands, God's Willing, Rift Wing Clouds Gate, Whiplash Trap, Flesh to Dust. Uh, any of these cards? God's Willing is borderline. Druid, Gitu Lava Runner, which is playable in uh, standard, I guess. Cathartic Reunion, Thorwald Archer, Reign of Thorns, Coiling Oracle, Foundry Inspector, Soothsaying, Enchantment, which says shuffle your library for five mana, or look at the top X cards of your library and put them back in any order for X mana. It's basically like a discount divining top. That's cool. I like that a lot, an uncommon. Deep Glow Skate, which is a uh, commander card that's good in the uh, Proliferate Planeswalker decks. And a Foil Flamekin Harbinger, good for the Elemental decks, which are getting more and more like of the thing, right, in Commander, thanks to good old... Uh, what's his face? Omnath. Oh, I probably should clean up my mess. 
So only two of the fours where I thought they were complete garbage. This is not complete garbage. It's not exciting, but I get it. Uh, Caught on the Brights. Resolve. Mist Raven, a limited card that I love. A, a flying mana ward, a flying mana ward. Archimancer. Oh, Duress. Fungal Infection, Minotaur, Fervent Strike, Greater Sandworm, Broken Bond, Belligerent Brontodon, Crystal Ball, Reese the Redeemed, Caged Sun. Wait, was this not the old slot? Oh, that's a Commander slot. And then a Bringer of the Black Dawn. It won Booster Pack, which opened a Caged Sun, a Reese the Redeemed, and a Bringer of the Black Dawn. That's some good shit. Again, we've managed to open like $20 worth of value from one booster. Like, you can't really ask for much more than that. Also, I could build like two commander decks out of the stuff I've opened so far. Like, they wouldn't be the strongest, but they'd be a good start. I think that's a really fun exercise. I think more people should do that. Just crack one of these boxes and build a commander deck. The only relic water, Dauntless Cathar, something, somebody knocking at my door. Totally lost. We're in the underworld. Okay. Sorry about that. My wife's home because of the whole quarantine thing, so she was able to answer the door and pick up a delivery. Thorn the Black Rose, a playable pauper card that we needed more copies of. Death Touch, when it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. It's pretty fucking good. Some goblin once told me. Curse of the Nightly Hunt. Crocian Druid, Experiment 1. Roisin the Meanderer. Sure. Thornwood Falls. Hypnotic Spectre. Hippie. Hippie, hippie, hippie. The Gitvog Monster! Out of foil boundless realms? Fuck me, that pack was good. That pack was good. Look at all these playable cards, my friends. Fuck! All right, left Tyler's tracker in here with the, the cool stuff. But like, outside of their original environment, it's good to see them back together again in the same limited environment. My God. Like I said, you could draft a sick deck. You can build a good commander deck out of this. This is a gas. Okay, next pack. Oh, open these boxes, it's so therapeutic and exciting. Suppression Bonds, Fencing Ace, Days, Brilliant Spectrum, Gain Spring something, Absorb Viz, that was, this, this cycle was sick in the original um, Modern Masters. Seismic Shift, Faithless Looting, Rip, uh, Ancient Brontodon, some sort of Serator, Goblin Death Raiders, which is the name of a card I've always enjoyed and I love the art as well, because Raymond Swanlin makes some real violent looking art and I love it. Some sort of automaton. Doom! <laughs> Speaking of names of cards I think are funny, Doom Gape, Torment of Hellfire, and a foil Sarkin the Mad. Again, how often do you get to open a dual deck Doom Gape, a Torment of Hellfire, and a Sarkin the Mad in the same fucking pack? God, if you're, if you're drafting that, what would you take? Well, probably this, right? This card's actually not a good limit. I just can't keep... Look, look at this sheer amount of solid, playable, powerful, good cards that we've opened in this set. Things that people will want for their decks, as long as Paper Magic survives and Wizards don't kill it. And also, look at all the... And that's just, that's, that's just that pile there. That's a pile of cards that I'd be happy to open up in, like, normal packs, right? Look at this good stuff. Fuck. Okay. I think we're halfway through the box. We've got another... Nine packs? Okay, we're over half. Conviction, Forsake the Worldly... Some sort of... What the fuck is that? Ink Fathom D Diver? Yeah, whatever. Triton Tactics, Prowling Pangleon, Noxious Dragon, Storm Blood Berserker. Again, these are all cards. This is card and this card are great and limited. Also, this can be played. This is a cube card as well. Goblin Oriflame, Foragers, Ember Weavers, Lightning Helix, Heavy uh, Thing of Bob, Release the Ants, a, a Combo Kill and Legacy, Nissa, Voice of Zendikar, and a Foil. What the fuck? Frozen Aether. Artifacts, creatures, and lands you control. Your opponent's controlling the fact. Oh, it's the color shifted Kismet, isn't it? But again, I get the foiling on this because it's cool to see a foil color shifted blue card. So I'm glad there's at least one of those in there. Oh, another Mythic Planeswalker. God, these boosts. It's like, I don't know, it's like smoking fine cigars. Not that I've ever smoked fine cigars because I don't really like smoking. But I assume this is what smoking fine cigars is like. Drafting this. I've also thought about old Master sets, like Modern Masters 1. It's like. Getting a Modern Masters 1 together, even if it's expensive and drafting it, because the draft environment's so good as well, is like smoking fine cigars. It's the magic equivalent of. Uh, here's some cards that I don't know and don't care about, I don't think. A The Fallen, Castaway, Golden Warpaint, Scrapper, Gundam, Absence Pilgrim, uh, uh, 
um, reclusive artificer, a crone refuge, hedron crab, archer Araska, and a foil fungusaur. <laughs> Look at that thing's face! <laughs> it is a, when it's dealt damage per person, person card on it, it's a 2 2 for 4. It's a pretty good limited card, to be fair. Although I'm going to put it over here. As much as I enjoy opening something with art that dumb, uh, that should not be in my foil slot. Is there a meme around it? Was there a deck at some point? I don't know. But that's a whiff. Like this, I mean, perhaps it still feels the, the purpose of like, someone looking at this pack and opening the card and being like, ha, oh, that's so cool. And that border definitely gets that, right? This, on the other hand, don't think gets that. Resurrection, sweet card. Ghost of the Moors, Monastery Lawmaster, Peel from Reality, sweet card. Vampire Champion, Dev Bridge Shaman. Goblin Bombardment. Oh god, I love Goblin Bombardment. That's a commander card. Renegade Tactics. Grapple with the Past. Commune with Nature. Campaign of Vengeance. Suspicious Bookcase. Oh, Nemesis of Reason. Fucking... Fuck off, Steam Flogger Boss. And Celestial Kirin. Now, this is a rare. It's kind of becoming iconic because it's the card that says... Whenever you cast a Spirit or Arcane spell, destroy all permanents with that converted mana cost. So alongside the new, like, um, the Scion of Ugin, or was it Scion of Ugin? The X costing Spirit Scion fighter for Ugin. You can zero it and bolt it. Armageddon, everyone, basically. It's, it's the Armageddon deck. Cool. I love them for some reason. I want to build a mill deck. I might, when my secret lairs arrive, I'm going to be, be building Una. So I've actually opened this and the Sewer Nemesis and all sorts of things that I want to put in the Una deck. So, I'm going to be building Una for definite. Una. Right, okay, let's go Territorial Hammer Skull, Path of Peace, Fleet and Distraction, Shade of Parasite, Reckless Imp, Galio Skin Witch, Impact Tremors, oh, the bees! Dragon Ball, a Blasphemous Act, Impact Tremors, and Horn Nest all in this format, by the way. Sapling Migration, Harmonize, Abzan Guide, Field of Ruin, Assemble the Legion, Star of Extinction, oh, and a Foil Eidlord of Rhetoric. Sick! I love this card. It's an uncommon, but again, I feel like it's highlighting the frame. This is a, such a cool foil frame that I'm okay with that being in the set. And I also just love the card. We've got a mythic, a rare, a foil, uncommon. I also think this was a rare, but it wasn't. And a field of ruin in that pack. Uh -huh. Alright. Oh, I'm getting sad because we're over halfway. Ugh. Crack this. What have we got? Mardu Horde Chief. Core Sky Climber, Labyrinth Guardian, Frostling, Sweet Limited Card, Lazatep Behemoth, Grave Digger, uh, Andrew Champion, something I don't know what that is, Timberwatch Elf as a Pauper All Star. I say All Star. It's a Pauper Star in the Elves deck. Uh, Descent of Deliverance, which is the artifact that thing that can be. Uh, this can see some play in sideboards, I'm sure it does in some formats. Cunning Breeze Dance is a pretty strong bomb. Unclaimed Territory. Mana Tithe in our pre slot. That is sick. Go put that over here. Uh, Debtor's Nell, Sweet Rare, and Reki, The History of Kamigawa, which is whenever you play a legendary spell, draw a card, which is quite a sweet, like, uh, commander, if you want to play, like, green Planeswalker Tribal, I feel. Maybe I should build, oh, so many commanders I want to build, I'm real. Fuck, these boosters are great. I kind of want to crack the other boxes now. Part of me wondered if I should crack all three boxes, sleeve the entire thing, and have it as, like, a mystery cube. I think that would be great. Right. Oh. Tell me in the comments below if you think a mystery cube would be sweet. Cavalry, Night of the Iron Sky, Ujitai's Breath, uh, some sort of elemental, Undying Embrace, Driver of the Dead, Spark Major Prince, Fall of the Hammer, pretty good limit card, Mox Waller, Mox Maul, I oh, can't talk, Regrowth, Wonder of the Eye, Rogue's Passage, it's a commander card, right? What the hell is this? Oh, it's Imperial Ain't. <laughs> Armor. Oh, more excitingly, just an Elish Norn. <laughs> a foil sundial of the infinite. I thought the non-foil was already in here, but I don't think any of the foils are cards that are already in. Um, yeah. I would open a sundial of the infinite and Elish Norn in the same pack. That's a pretty sweet pack. Fuck, I love this set. I just don't think anyone would ever crack a box of this and be unhappy. Like, even if the monetary value was not there, right? Even if somehow the block of magic collapsed down and all society is... Go to hell in a handbasket because of some sort of pandemic. Who knows? Excuse me. Even if that happened, you'd still be excited because the cards are good. And you can play with them. I mean, you can play with all magic cards. I mean, these are magic cards you can play in Commander or, 
or just like 1v1 a really cool, strong, powerful limited environment. Uh, War Behemoth, Promise of the Buried, Contradict, the one that everyone thought the art might have been Force of Will when it was uh, spoiled, Temple Fisher, Shambling Goblin, Skulking Ghoul, Sarkin's Rage, Goblin Motivator, Spider Spawning is in the limited format, fuck! So good. Some sort of menacing thing. Unflinching courage to put on your spider and hit them with. Mortar pod. Hurricane in the... Oh, we've got two wraths in this set. Wow. Okay. We've got Hurricane in our uh, pre-M14 border. We've got Anger of the Gods in the Iconic Masters reprinting. And we've got a Foil Triskelion. I wonder if you can get him and Micaeus in this set and just, like, murder people. I don't know. There's something about opening three rares in a, in a booster pack. But just It just makes me excited in my pants. Like, it makes my asshole wet. Right. Seedscraft. Avon Battle Priest. Slither Blade. Castaway's Despair. Vraska's Finisher. March of the Drum. The black cards all look really dark. Okay, I had some complaints with some of the fours being shit. I'm also going to say the printing is slightly darker than I would like it to be. Only mildly, perhaps. And it makes the black cards not really pop. Outnumber. Zealot of the God Pharaoh. Byway Courier. Overrun. Sick limit card that is. Well, that's probably one of the greatest limit cards of all time. Let's be real. It's not like a pack rat and chase memory adept. Uh, Mardu Rough Rider, Ornithopter, Meddling Mage in our pre new format, uh, new set thing. My Bob, whatever the fuck it's called. Enchant Land, tap it, make a 5 5 beast token with trample. Fucking hell, I didn't know that thing existed. Cool. Oh, let's go over here. Foil is <laughs> Madam Earth Silver. Okay, again, I get it. That and the Harbinger are like huge bit players in some tribal EDH decks that people want to be able to get hold of foils of that aren't super expensive. I understand, I appreciate and I get it. Meanwhile, what commander deck wants Fungusaur? What commander deck wants White Knight? And what, okay, some, okay, Slivers might want, oh, is that why? Huh. Ah, oh, fuck it, it's still shit. Two boosters to go. I would like, if I got a Mana Crypt, I think it'd be, I, I, the, all, all, I, I would, I would shit myself. It's just, I'm having so much fun opening anyway. I just want to get the most valuable card out of it too. Is that so much to ask? Wandering Champion, Core Fire, Walker, Youthful Scholar, Sea Look Monster, Core of Dark Tidings, Eyebites Bending, which I think is legitimately a card that people should play more in Commanders. So it's such a good unconditional kills. Ah, but we've now got Murder, Murderous Rider Heroes down for. Is it good enough anymore? Yeah, I think it is. Grape Shot. Some sort of Gremlins, Become Immense, Tarjuru Warcaller, a strong, strong limit to one Agony Warp, Diamond Mare, Font of Mythos, Memory Erosion, and a Foil Lantern of Insight. Jeez, between this Witchbane Orb, Codex Shredder, we're building Lantern Control here, boys and girls. So we get to draw more cards with this one. We get to mill people out with that one. I mean, in Limited, that could be a pretty strong way of killing your opponent now. Does the last pack, I just want a Mana Crypt. I, I mean, I'm, I'm being a bit greedy now. I'm pretty happy with everything we've opened. We've opened some absolutely great shit. But I kind of also want a Mana Crypt. Is that greedy? I guess it's not greedy just to want it. I mean, I'm not gonna play it. I don't play Mana Crypt in Command Arrow Principle anyway. I probably would play it in Test Shard if it was CDH level. But uh, Divine Favor, Renewed Faith, Glint, Preordain. These cards feel, Seven Gars Butcher, Dredge Curtains, Scaremonger Brawler, Salt Forest Blast, Sylvan Bounty, Beneath the Sands, Reflector Mage, Lightning Greaves, Knoll Spine Dragon. Wasn't that a card like back in the day in Dragonstorm, I wanna say? Tori Mauler. Huh, a foil not of this world. Sweet. Again, a playable card that sees play in the Dark Depths decks in Legacy to protect your uh, Merit Lage. Uh, I've played in the sideboard of Grishol brand as well. It's got a really cool, like, uh, translucent, uh, tribal instant colorless frame, which I think is really cool, and I'm glad they spotlighted and highlighted it in the foil slot. Wow. 24 foils, only three of them I think are shite. And one of them is not even quite shite, but it's still a bit shite. All right, let's find out what we opened. 
Okay, I'm not going to organize this too much. We've got the three shit foils we've got here that we know we don't care about. We've got a stack of playable cards in other formats. Some of these things are lightning greaves and soul rings and things, preordains, stuff that will be a couple of dollars at some point again in the future, you know, as they do before they get reprinted again. So this is a stack, look at that stack of playables, and I mean playables across Modern and Legacy and Commander and Pioneer, like not just playable in standard that you get from a normal booster box, okay? And then we've got just a, so much value and sweet shit. Look at this beautiful selection of cards. Some of these rares were a bit shit in terms of cost or that I won't play with them. Like I'll probably not play with this Odric. Um, but I still can't really complain. Like Sakashima Imposters, Supreme Verdict, a Cage Sun, a Broodmother Dragon. Mimic that. Okay, Tower of Aeons is probably the worst rare we open. Let's see if we can beat that. Let's see if we can beat that. Sue Nemesis, I needed one and wanted one. I'd never owned a Ruby King, let alone a foil one, so I'm pretty excited about that. Let's put that in the foils pile. So it's weirding. Expropriate was an absolute slam dunk. I mean, that pays for like, what? Let it creep up a bit more over the next couple months. That pays for like a third of the box, perhaps. That's pretty good. Uh, Weathered Wayfarer is a favorite of mine as well. Hornet Sting, Souls Attendant, and Revenant, which is Doom Gate. Not of this world. Taurine Mauler, Nosebire Dragon, Lantern of Insight, Memory Erosion, Font of Mythos, Foil Manoweth Sliver, Spawning Grounds. Then we've got Meddling Mage, Hurricane, Anger of the Gods, Foil Triskelion, Foil Sundar of the Infinite, and Elish fucking Norn. Reki, the History of Kamigawa. Uh, Debtors Nell, Star of Extinction, Assemble the Legion, Foil Idol and Venerate. It's almost like they wanted me to love this box and they succeeded. Nemesis of Reason, Stone, okay, Steam Flogger Boss is up there. I mean, it's more of a meme than this one, so maybe we let it slide, but it's pretty shit. Uh, Frozen Aether, Celestial Kirin, Archer of Azka, which is becoming player, more and more playable than like, as they introduce things like Pioneer and Historic and stuff, although Historic isn't a free hero only. Nissa, Voice of Zendikar, Torment of Hellfire, A Foil Sark in the Mad, Hypnotic Spectre, Boundless Realms, over here, Reese the Redeemed, Git Rock Monster, Tireless Tracker, Ha! Flaking Harbinger, Soothsaying, uh, which is an uncommon, so I should have put that on that pile, really. And a Deep Glow Skate. <sighs> I mean, I think if someone said to me to show me those cards, let's part of the video now and said, would you buy this for £90? I might actually, without without like doing the math and figuring out that was value, I still might go, yeah, fuck it, why not? There's some cool shit there. And then also, I think, I mean, bearing in mind, I've got to open with friends in the past, whether they be my boxes or their boxes. I got to open one of Masters 1, 2, and 3 boxes when they first came out. Ultimate Masters boxes. Um, I think I opened an Iconic Masters box as well. And I think, by far, this is the most fun I've had opening a box. Not only because it's full of, like, sheer value and good shit, but it's really fun opening a set where you don't really know what you're opening. Like, when you are opening other sets with a set and much more, I mean, this is finite, but a much smaller... Uh, a card pool, you know what are the hits and what are the misses. Where with this, we were just hitting cards that I love, like Get Rob Monster, or like valuable cards like Elishnorn that I didn't even realize were available. And barring like the super hits, like like uh, Mana Crypt, or Expropriate, or like Foil Send Triplets, or whatever the chase foil is, apart from the real super chase cards, it's cool just opening random mythics and random old rares. Going down memory lane, getting excited about playing this. This will make it literally into a commander that I will play on the store once this fucking shitty pandemic is over. So yeah, I can't stress enough how fun opening that box actually was. In some ways it makes me want to open the other ones. But I wonder if... I wonder if the... the, the, the it would die out on the second or third box. Because something I experienced and something I witnessed when drafting this in Bologna was that we were getting draft pods where we were seeing the same rares over and over. I went to three different draft pods where I opened both Hornet's Nest and um, Bastard's Collar. Now that might be anecdotal, but there is talk of how the box are relatively mappable if you get like the same batch or whatever. What they did in Reno was they stuck all the boosters in a big plastic tub and shook them and shook them all up. And then I didn't experience that in the two drafts that I played and no one else even mentioned it. When Bologna is like something that people were talking about. Um, yeah, this isn't Cube. This is a Chaos Draft, but a Chaos Draft where all the cards are good. Part of the fun of Chaos Draft is the walk down memory lane. You don't know what you're going to get. And the fact that everyone's decks are shit and the cards are shit, right? 
That's why I think you should have tried to avoid putting too many masters sets into your Chaos Draft so that Channel 5 will happen doing GPs, because it makes the, the power level too high in some ways, and the old cards just don't stand a chance. This, on the other hand, on the whole, everything's just really good. So this isn't just a random selection of cards they've just reprinted and stuck in boosters. It's a curated list of cards that are actually fun to play with. This set is fucking awesome. It is a slam dunk, and Wizards of the Coast should be attempting to do more and more stuff like this. Whilst simultaneously bringing down the price of the initial building blocks of constructed formats. That's right. I'm going to bang that drum one more time in this video. Reprint fetch lands, you cowards. I hope you enjoyed me opening that mystery booster box. I've still got two more left. I probably won't be opening them necessarily on the channel. They'll be drafted at some point in the future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video because it helps the algorithm to understand that I'm not a worthless piece of shit and recommend more of my videos to people like yourselves and to help me grow both in size of channel and the engorgement of my penis. Let me know what you think of the mystery boosters in the comment section down below. I would like to know your thoughts. I mean, on the whole, I'm pretty sure everyone's fucking loving it, but there's gotta be some sour puss out there who fucking hates it. In the meantime, remember, there were people on YouTube and in the comment sections on Reddit wanting to badmouth the shit out of this beautiful, beautiful product, and it ended up being pretty fucking good. What that tells me is that it's not all doom and gloom for magic, alright? They might try and sell it to fetch lands and secret lands that cost too much money and don't give a shit about eternal formats, but sometimes, sometimes people do good. Gavin Verhey, thank you. This is, this is literally a fucking love letter to what people like about magic. Thank you. With that out of the way, I'm gone. Like, comment, and subscribe, bitches!